How big is this for Under Armour? What does it mean? Hi, Sarah. Hi, Carl. Uh, it's, it's great. It's a huge, huge moment for the brand. And you're right. It's just as this uh, uh, at this point in time, we've been quietly building the sport of basketball authentically. You know, really since we launched our first shoe, going back to 2010. But you take a seminal moment from, you know, if you go just back to 2014, where we had um, uh, only two teams in the tournament, to this year having. You know, 17 teams representing half the bracket, and that's just on the men's side. You know, now having 50% of the Final Four, it just shows that the hard work that we put in place. And you know, just give a little of that timeline if you take a minute and think about it. It's um, uh, 2014, like I said, we had Steph Curry was our first uh, invitee to the All-Star Game. He wasn't even starting that year. And then you look at the hard work over the last couple of years, and, and start with the women's side of the bracket, having won the tournament uh, with the University of South Carolina in 17. Uh, with Coach Don Staley, and then in 18, Notre Dame winning on the women's side, and Notre Dame competing on the women's side again. To in 19, uh, this year we had two participants in the three-point contest in in Charlotte. We had yeah. the slam dunk champ and Hamidou Diallo, two all-star athletes, and Steph and, and starters, and Joel and, and Joel and Beast with 76 and Steph, and and uh, it just shows there's no silver bullet. It's just a long, slow grind mm -hmm. in, in this journey. So we're proud of where we are in basketball yeah. right now, for sure. I mean, I get that it, that you like the bragging rights, and, and it's certainly good brand exposure, but does having two out of the final four actually drive sales in any material way? Well, I, I think it, it emphasizes that, you know, the performance you know, aspect that we take into our brand of saying that this is what and who we are, uh, that our products work, that we are, giving, we are giving athletes that edge, we are giving teams that sign with us, is that, you know, we make a promise to them that there's a superpower inside of every Under Armour uniform, every Under Armour shoe that's made. And, you know, just on the grassroots side, you know, there's, there's, there's four to 5,000 high schools that are out there playing in Under Armour uniforms today. So this is just a great validator for them to show them the same products they're wearing, you know, out there at the grassroots level, the same things that can take you to the highest level of championship at the collegiate level and even at the NBA as well. I wonder if it hurts Under Armour sort of indirectly that a Nike team, Duke, will not be in the Final Four with its star player like Zion Williamson not playing. I mean, isn't that bad for ratings? Uh, I don't know. We're not a part of the ratings business, but we're part of is, is the championship business. And so, you know, you've got two amazing Cinderella stories like Texas Tech and, and Auburn, the Auburn Tigers that are, you know, their first Final Four appearances. And they're doing it wearing our brand. So I think it just underscores the fact that what we're doing is right. And it's just a little bit of a slower burn than maybe most people would like, especially as a public company. But, uh, you know, our heads <laughs> are down. We're grinding. And there's a lot of teams that are out there winning championships. And we had 11 conference champions. Uh, you know, across the NCAA brackets this year. So, out of 330 or so odd uh, Division One programs, that's a that's a major, major deal. So, they're, they're winning when they're wearing Under Armour. That's for sure. I wanted to ask you about Zion. Expected to leave the NBA soon. Expected to create one of the biggest bidding wars ever from the shoe companies. What's your plan to try to win that one? Well, I think he's a great athlete and uh, someone that you know, like uh, all of us, that the world deserves to see what what this young man can do. And so. He's probably one of the, the best prospects to come out in a very, very long time, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna be a, a just a, a real just a real heartbreaker for a lot of people in the NBA with <laughs> with what he does. But you know that remains to be seen. We've got a terrific stable. We love what we have, but you know we we've said all along is that we're big enough and at a size and scale these days that we can we can do just about anything. We just can't do everything. So we got to be smart and thoughtful about how we play money ball and how we deploy the dollars. How about his exploding Nike shoe? How did you react to that? Uh, like I said, my first my first thought was for the athlete, and it, it would be a crime if, if uh, anything would happen to him from a performance standpoint that would prevent him from being able to play. Uh, so you know, we're, we're 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 focused on innovation. I think this whole bent that we've taken as Under Armour's performance and innovation, uh, you know, just an energy brand from that standpoint, it just underscores the importance of that. You know, just because something looks great, uh, it doesn't mean that it performs great. And so the unique thing about Under Armour is that our product A is meant to and designed. To look beautiful and to be uh, aesthetically compelling, but you have the confidence to know that it's always going to work and it's always going to perform for you. So we're going to stay committed to that. I think that just that underscores again and comes out this weekend with the amount of success we've had with teams uh, competing, getting into the, the, the tournament, and, and frankly, uh, now in a position to actually win a national championship. It's a major deal. It's a major deal. You know, it strikes me you're celebrating. Obviously, the coaches in the universities are going to get paid handsomely and doing well. What about the players? Should student athletes? be paid for their performance and for supporting this industry that's worth billions? Well, I, I think there's two sides to the trade, and the one fact is that there's thousands, tens of thousands of student athletes that have the ability to go to school, and, and I don't want to jump on either, either side of the, of the argument with it. 
Uh, it's been played out too much, but uh, I, I'm, I'm excited. As a student athlete who's lucky enough to be able to go to school and, and have my, my uh, tuition paid for by the school, it's something I'm grateful for. But, yeah, you've got, you've mm-hmm. got a, a dialogue that will continue to play out and deciding that making sure yeah. that, you know, parity is critical, that these athletes aren't being taken advantage of. And, uh, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of athletes that have a lot to be grateful for from the time of, of being in school and having the, the fortune to be on scholarship. You know, we talked a lot about Zion, Kevin. He's a superstar, but he is no Beyonce. And Adidas just signed her yesterday. They have Kanye West. You've had some success with The Rock. How aggressively are you guys going to go after some of these non-athlete mega celebrities? I mean, coming out of our investor day in December, we were pretty clear about what our direction looks like over the next five years of driving ETS, of being a, a, a hyper-profitable company. And the best way we think we can do that is by satisfying our consumer by giving them what they want. And for Under Armour, our why, the reason that this brand exists is because we make the best technical product in the world. And, of course, it's got to look great. It's got to be a part of it. Uh, and you're going to find your endorsers. You're going to find those that, that represent you. I mean, our relationship with Dwayne The Rock Johnson goes back to 2000 and 2002. So we've been doing it for a long time. So we'll always be in these conversations. We'll always do that analysis and find out if something's right for us. And, Beyonce is, uh, I mean, she's an icon, uh, you know, bigger than just about anybody on the planet. So uh, for us at the, at right now, you know, we love our stable. We love who we have, and, uh, you know, we wish them the very best. But we're going to keep rocking and were doing you, things Were you a little jealous of that pickup? I mean, Sarah, I, I, I've, got a, I've got big <laughs> eyes and we've got a big, big appetite. It doesn't mean that you can buy everything at the store either. And so you've got to be thoughtful. <laughs> so as we continue to play this game of Moneyball, which is how we allocate the dollars, is that, you know, there's only so much time, people, and money, and we've got to be smart and thoughtful about the way we do it. We think what's best for Under Armour's business right now, we're going to build a great women's business. We've got a billion-plus dollar uh, UA women's business right now, and if we just focus on that, we think there's a lot of consumers that come. But, you know, never say never. So there's always, yeah. uh, there's always another chapter. So, so beyond the athletes, I just wanted to ask about the competitive environment right now. I know, I know you can't go too deep into sales in a quiet period, but... You know, you've got Lululemon comping 17% per quarter. Nike's turned around its North American business. Adidas is doing well. Where do you see yourself fitting in right now, especially in the U.S.? Well, I, th- I think it just speaks to the fact that there's a, the, to be in the, the space of health and wellness and athletic, it's such a great grounding for us. And so we love being in the space. We love competing. You know, I just got back from a 12-day trip that began in, in, in Delhi and in Mumbai and in India, where we opened the country up, opened our first store, and we brought Michael Phelps with us to do it. And you just see the energy and excitement about this. You know, they've got a diabetes problem there. There's you know, all sorts of things we can do. So the more that we can just draw attention, you know, it's always been the, the rising tide raising all the ships, and we're happy to be one of those ships. And, you know, in the, the 14-year uh, journey we've had as a public company, um, you know, there's a lot more work for this brand to do, and I'm glad that we can do it now as a global brand versus, you know, just a primarily North American brand as well. You know, we've seen your stock has done really well. It's up 22 percent this year. It's outperforming some of the competitors and the overall market. But we've also seen some articles and some scandals from the, you know, strip club expenses to a board inquiry into your relationship. Are you putting all of this behind you? Should investors be worried about these kind of issues? Sarah, yeah, this brand's moving forward. We've always been moving forward, and so. You know, we, we, live, we live in a bright spotlight, but we're really proud, I think, of the team we have, the, the strategy that we have in place. Again, we're able to articulate uh, to our shareholders. The most important we're going to be able to do to our consume, for our consumers. And so there's a, there's a strong culture at Under Armour. There's one that is constant evolution, just like we're, we're, we're in year three of this, uh, this three-year journey that we talked about through 17, 18, and now 19. And so there's work to be done. We'll continue to drive at it, but we're going to make Under Armour the best place in the world to work, and people are going to be really proud of that, especially – Again, those consumers that wear that wear that UA on their bodies, and with the, you know, super exclusive UA superpowers, that get included in everything that we do. Yeah, I mean, it's good to get an update on the transformation that investors have been following carefully. What, what's left to do on that list? Well, I think you're just you're, you, you get to run the same play. I mean, for so long, it's you know, you're, you're not doing anything new. It's it's uh, you know, implementing the new process. We switched to category management, the global operating model. You know, the last part of my trip, I was just in Amsterdam, where we opened up our, our new European office. And the leader that we have in place and just the team coming together and the positive energy. When you see this, if you go outside, is that the U.S. has been a bit of a lull the way that people have, uh, I think, you know, externally and, you know, sort of allowed the, you know, to be in the gauntlet. But just seeing the energy for this brand and being to have this, this global basis that we can build on, it's a really powerful foot for us to build on. It allows us to put North America, you know, Stabilize North America, which we've been able to do over the last couple of years, and now we can, you know, get our get our, our ducks in a row and really start to march forward. So I feel great about where we are and where we're heading.
All right, final question. Here's a serious one. If Texas Tech and Auburn both make it to the final, who do you root for? Uh, I've been, I've, I'm going out to the game tomorrow, so I can't think of anything better. And when that decision happens, I'm going to be there. And I will, I will be quiet, but I'll be wearing <clears throat> blue and orange on one side and black and red on the other. But, you know, we've already won by having two teams in there, so we're celebrating right now. And I'm really happy for those coaches, those, those athletes, and, you know, just you know how important it is that schools like that, especially in, in the SEC and what Texas Tech means it represents. These are two incredible Cinderella stories that really, they mimic the Under Armour story and extent, so that's what we're most proud of. So it's going to be a great weekend, and, and we're proud to put our flag in the ground in, in the sport of basketball, that's for sure.